Hey, what's up gamers? Today we're going to talk about home lab. Home lab being the term just for the environment that you kind of play around with at home, like home servers, stuff like that. That's what we're going to talk about today. So the core of mine is over here at t110.mathx.ca. And this is a Proxmox install. Proxmox is a virtualization technology like, uh, well, it's it's a management software for QEMU, but front end for you to mess around with like ESXi, open source, really great piece of software and a great starting point for most people to get into home virtualization stuff. So it's uh, Proxmox is actually a modified Ubuntu install uh, with its own custom kernel that allows for better virtualization performance and pass-throughs, I think. Not that much different, though. Anything that you could install on a host Ubuntu machine, you can install on Proxmox on the core bare metal machine. But obviously, the idea behind it is that you want to actually have uh, virtual machines running inside of it. So the, the actual machine that I'm dealing with here is a... This is a Dell T110 decommissioned server hardware this sits in our furnace room and it's stacked full of hard drives basically all that it is is like a giant storage pool with uh upgraded cpu like people don't want these computers anymore i think i got this pc back in 2015 so i've had it for a while and i got it for a, a really good price too uh it originally came as a dual core four threads and now it is a quad core eight threads which is for my home environment, pretty much perfect. Uh, I have three VMs running, and if I need to, like, let's say that I needed uh, more power for one VM, I just shut off the other ones for a while and then boot it back up. So currently it's got 17.6 uh, gigs of RAM, which is allocated across these three machines pretty nicely. And for storage space, um, this is just the host drive, but if we go here to this is the total allocation of the drives they're not at this peak capacity right now uh they're just like allocated that much right like that that doesn't mean that they're full to that point it just means that's how much of it has been provisioned for use with other uh vms so uh, the the reason why that this is a different tab is because you can cluster multiple Proxmox installs together for failover and uh, storage, that kind of stuff. But I do not have that. And for most home lab users, I don't think that's going to be how it is either. Uh, also up here, this is a wireless router. I don't have Ethernet running down to where this PC is right beside the waffle maker. So it's actually connected to a DDWRT old uh, Linksys router that got flashed and it's just acting as a wireless to Ethernet bridge making use of what I had lying around. You can get a really crappy USB wireless adapter and that will not work well for a use case like this. The throughput is like if you actually spent you know thirty dollars on one you'd probably be fine but the little cheap five dollar ones that you use with a Raspberry Pi are not usable for this kind of a, of a situation. So I just have this Linksys router hooked up. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about how I have things set up. So I have three storage pools. The biggest one is a three, three by three terabyte hard drive RAID array in ZFS 1-0. RAID 1 would just mean that the drives are completely mirrored, like whatever data is on one drive is on the other in case it fails. But since it's three drives in uh, RAID Z10, I think that uh, because it's zero, there's some striping going on. I'm not sure. This is just what was recommended to me. If you're looking to start home labbing, the cheapest way to do it is probably to buy some used PC on eBay and then throw a bunch of hard drives in it. But also, the second cheapest way is probably just to build something new that fits your use case really well. Like this, uh, you don't need server hardware in order to host servers. All you really got to do is uh, install something like Proxmox or ESXi 
or even Windows 10 with uh, Windows 10 Server or Windows 10 Pro, you can even do Hyper-V on. Hyper-V completely sucks, by the way. I would way rather use this. Hyper-V is very annoying to deal with, so I, I use Proxmox instead. Quick aside, because I am hooked up wirelessly, you saw there the, the round trip time for ping packet is 4 milliseconds. And I'm not hardwired to that, right? I'm That's through that wireless tomato bridge. So if I ping my 10.0.0.1, which is my uh, router, which I'm directly connected to, that's one millisecond, two milliseconds. So we're getting an extra two or three milliseconds by being wireless. And obviously, if there's more congestion on the network, this will fluctuate more because it's a wireless connection. But... Uh, for three milliseconds in my own home, it probably is not really worth it to drill a bunch of holes in the walls when this works just fine. So let's get into the machines. I have, uh, this is my main one. We can just use Proxmox through uh, VNC, right? What does this run? Well, we got a RuneScape server running for me. We've got uh, Deluge, which is running as a, a service as well you can access this through the web and then i have jellyfin running and this will also be like if i want a second pc that i need to run software on for testing with two clients or something then i usually run it on this because i don't have a, a secondary laptop or something or i'll spin up a vm on this machine that i'm recording on right now so i'll show off those two services there so if we go to w110 uh, 8096. This is Jellyfin. This is like a, a Plex alternative. Okay, so if we load up, you know, just anything, some random event. GSL Season 3 Code A. So Jellyfin, you can load this up from like Apple TV or Chromecast or whatever too, which is pretty cool. Uh, secondary, I told you I have that Deluge server, so if I want to download a torrent on my PC, like I don't have uh, I don't have a torrent client installed on here. I'll just download it through this web portal. I'll go add and uh, upload the torrent file, and then it'll download it onto my network storage. Also, I can also access it as a network share, obviously, just through uh, SMB name there. So if you're on the same network as it, uh, they all have nice naming scheme like this. So W110. It's on the T110, it's the Windows one, so it's got... If I need to transfer files around, I'll just upload them to this directory. That Windows PC used to be a physical, like that was the machine that was on the bare metal of the system. So the way that I migrated that to a virtual machine is that I use Clonezilla. Uh, I booted the machine with Clonezilla, cloned the drive to an external drive, and then wiped the system, installed Proxmox, run Clonezilla in a VM with a disk that's the same size as the one that I cloned, and restore that VM disk. Okay, second, uh, second VM here. This is my Ubuntu VM, which is very underpowered. It's got two gigs of RAM, two CPU cores, but I don't really use this for much. My, uh, my web server that I run my website from, this one, which is a Google Cloud instance, most of the time if I want to test something, I just actually do it on this, which is probably, again, not best practices. If, if this was like a company machine, I wouldn't do that, but... This is my messing around Google Cloud instance that I pay 17 cents for a month. By the way, if you're not on Google Cloud, free products up to monthly limits. Compute, there we go. E2 micro VM instance and 30 gigabytes of disk space and five gigabyte month snapshots for free. For free dollars, no dollars a month, you get that. And then if you want a dedicated IP address, you pay like 17 cents a month. So let's say theoretically that I had a project that needed way more RAM than that. Like there is some software that won't install, like especially stuff that relies on a database, uh, won't install unless you have at least like 10 gigs of RAM, won't install unless you have at least 12 gigs of RAM or something. And if I wanted to test something like that, then I would need to just shut down 
one of my VMs and allocate more space over to this, which would take two seconds. Mainly, this is my build server for Checkrain Linux. This is not an official distro or anything, but uh, this is what I manage, which is a fork of minimal. But if I need to build a new version of that, hey, I'm on Windows. So the way that I would get around to managing that is I just log into this and clone the repository over, upload a new file or whatever. I also have a Mac OS VM. There are some things that you can only do on Mac OS, such as Xcode. So if you wanted to make iOS apps or something and you didn't have a Mac OS machine, Hey, you could virtualize like this is this is not full speed. It's a little laggy. It gets faster if you use something like uh, I'll show you splash top. This is like a team viewer sort of program. Also, it'll do audio. You don't get audio over VNC. But if we just connect in like this, this is a little bit faster in terms of uh, graphics performance which of course it won't show right now. It's usually a little faster in terms of graphics performance. It is lagging right now. But if you wanted to develop an iOS app or something or run a tool, I was uh, working on a project earlier this year, which was uh, Apple TV 2, like an old, this is like 10 years old, uh, but there was a jailbreak software called ATV Flash Black and only the Mac OS version seems to be updated to actually work anymore. So how do you do that? Hey, you just run it on a Mac. And I happen to have a Mac. It's just, it's a virtual Mac. I do have a pass through of, not in this picture here because I added it afterward, but it's plugged in. It's just not assigned. We'll get into why in a sec here. Okay, an RX 460. A lot of you are crying right now because you don't even have an RX 460 in your host machine. And I've got one sitting here doing nothing. Uh, the idea behind this was that I could have real graphics acceleration inside of the Mac OS VM, but it's not working right now, uh, at least at full speed. I can get it to boot with the RX 460 as the main video device, and it'll, like, if I hook a monitor up to it, it comes out. But it doesn't have good hardware acceleration anyway, so I'm just on Vert.io GPU. To get macOS set up in Proxmox, you do need to do a little bit of extra configuration. There's some good guides out there. But that's basically it for my home lab, guys.